Max had asked me if I would put my daughter into homeschooling. My initial gut feeling was no, like no way. Like that, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, especially given that I want her to develop socially and, and have those skills and build character and the dynamics of being around other students. But that, the more I speak about it, it almost feels like a natural transition. And I'm sorry, Max, keep, keep, keep going. Dude. I just, no, no, just no, wanted no, to call add, that add, out. Add, add, add to that. Why, why okay. the, I mean, we'll, we'll dive into this, but like why, why that shift in just the 10 minutes that we discussed it. All right, all right, everybody. Welcome back to In the Future. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Look at Max. That was it. That was, that was funny enough for you to just uh, crack up. Well, it's everything, it's everything you said before the audience joined. <laughs> That'll be, that will remain a mystery to them. But um, <laughs> speaking of which, so today we're going to talk about the future of homeschooling. It's actually a topic that we touched on before um, a little bit. We, we just touched the surface of it. Um, and, and Max, I'm going to pass it to you in a moment to kind of break down what your initial thoughts are of it. But it, it, we're going to change. We're going to see a world change where we're already as workers, right, in the workforce. We don't commute, right? So not all the time, not every day. I go to the office once a week, maybe, if that, I don't know about you, Max. So our commute just a click away, right? Click, boom, I'm in, I'm in my, in my email, my meetings, whatever it is, my Slack. Now imagine applying that to kids. It kind of makes sense in my opinion, right? For the most part, except one of the key things and key elements, and we'll talk about it is I feel like kids are developing and if they don't have particular social interactions that going to actual physical school gives them, I wonder you know, what kind of long-term impact that'll have. But what, what are your some initial thoughts of uh, the future of, of homeschool rising since we've seen that surge? I think it certainly is. Um, also, the numbers don't lie. I, right before this call, I actually found this Forbes article. I'll, I'll quote it for you. It says, in 2018, prior to remote learning, approximately two and a half million students were homeschooled in the U.S. Do you know how much that number rose by? No. This number has risen significantly, with estimates indicating that almost 4 million students are being homeschooled nationwide. I, I don't have the date for the, ar the article in front of me, but essentially doubled. Yeah, and, doubled, and we would assume doubled. it has grown since then. Isn't that interesting? That's crazy. You doubled the numbers of homeschooling. Obviously, pandemic must have been one aspect of it, right? I think, exactly. I, I actually think that it's the key aspect that kind of lit the fire and really shifted that tide. Mm -hmm. um, because during the pandemic, almost overnight, remote schooling, had to be a necessity yes and there were very interesting kind of like paths that developed as a result of that right like this country quickly realized that a we don't have internet available to all homes especially on the lower economic scale um they either don't have internet at all they needed that initial setup or they have slow internet and they needed something faster um which was like that's an infrastructure issue and like companies like at&t and like others they stepped up and they you know started um even like installing internet for free to low-income housing which is amazing that's great that has, that's awesome yeah yeah, yeah. that's and a must has, has, and exactly I, it is a must and, and people are demanding it to be a must in this country uh which which is very cool so i think that there's 5g should help that a little bit no like some of the the the, the g the 5g technology i don't know if 6g is coming soon but like that should make it a lot easier for them too right satellites are helping Expand in, some, in, some, in some sense, yeah. Um, but but like, I, I think the key takeaway here is the psyche of both parents and as a consequence of children changed because of the pandemic. They realized that okay, when when in person schooling gets taken away, we have this backup that in a way works. Obviously, there are some flaws, there are some gaps that need to be filled, but remote schooling proved to be very interesting. Yeah. The obvious. But downside, these are parents. Can, can we make that clear, though? These are parents who are teaching their own kids at home. I don't think that that is clear. Um, I, oh, I interesting. Think, okay. I, I, I actually don't agree with that. And, and I think that that would so be it's a harder remote show. schooling. More, it's really a remote schooling. You've got a professional teacher or somebody who's certified, but just teaches the, your kids remotely. You bring me to my, to my next point. Uh, okay, yeah. very, very good, Spencer. Um, I, th I, th I think it's important to define what homeschooling is because a lot of people get tripped up on this, right? You could be saying that it is an actual parent that is not allowing a child to attend school in person and be with other mm -hmm. children. And they themselves are constructing the curriculum and they're teaching them. Um, I think that's very problematic. The other side- I agree, by the way, because they're not professionals in this sense. Of yeah. course. And, and it's also like, you're just, I mean, how do you teach in, in like a systemic way, right? You could teach lessons here and there, but systematically, how do you, how do you actually do that as, as a parent? How do you develop an entire course? Yeah, not every parent's qualified to be a teacher. Sorry, no offense. Those and more, and uh, absolutely, and uh, and more than that, not every parent has the time, right? This is a very privileged um, situation where maybe you know, like like one of the parents is not working, 
that is already cutting away a large slice of, of the population that could benefit from this. But when I talk about like predicting that homeschooling will become a huge, huge, huge part of the um, of, of the of, of the United States society, I think that it will be more structured. I think that they could, that there will be um, like Khan Academy, Academy, right? Like that exists. They kind of do that. I think we're gonna have um, much more organized remote schooling um, mm-hmm. that's done at home. That's being done. That's being taught by professionals virtually. Um, maybe supplemented by some in-person Co- education as well. Colleges so do this, by the way. There. Colleges already do this. They do. So it's, they apply- do. So it's yeah. applying it to K-, K through 12. It, yes. it, it, it makes up, man. I mean, the more we talk about it, and, and I'll, just to give the audience, sorry to interrupt you, a little preview. It's like before we got on the call, Max had asked me if I would put my daughter into homeschooling. My initial gut feeling was no, like no way. Like that, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, especially given that I want her to develop socially and, and have those skills and build character and the dynamics of being around other students. But that, the more I speak about it, it almost feels like a natural transition. And I'm sorry, Max, keep keep, keep going. Dude. I just, no, no, just wanted to call add, that out. Add, add, add to that. Why, why okay. the, I mean, we'll, we'll dive into this, but like why, why that shift in just the 10 minutes that we discussed it? I guess because we had more time to kind of think about it. And, and, and I guess things that you're bringing up just kind of, it almost feels, you said, well, A, the way you said it was organized, right? Because my initial thought is like a parent is, is teaching or I, I think of this like disorganized fashion of teaching. Number two, for a lot of colleges, it was almost like a natural transition to, to go online, almost fully. There's some online-only colleges that are very much legit, uh, give you legit credentials, and it makes it accessible, especially for people who are working full-time um, and doing other things. And I think for a kid, you know, somebody who's K through 12, the, they're already growing up in a digital native world where computers and phones are, are, are accessible to them. They grow up with them. And while I still think it's important for them to socialize, and we talked about this a little bit before, I, I do find that it's that that it might be a natural transition for them. Like they may not mind that, and they may still have social interactions because the way they may social interact might be with extracurricular activity. And I know that also in itself sounds a little bit like privilege. Like, oh yeah, what what kid's going to be able to go to swimming and soccer or board gaming or computer, you know, club after work? I agree, we're not really there yet, but I think. Uh, that could be more beneficial to them too, because we were saying we were, we were saying before the the social dynamics of kids as they get older, their maturity, you know, they're they're having more complex feelings, uh, but their maturity level hasn't really matched that. So that's where you get all like the, the bullying. Oh, this person's different. Let's make fun of them. Or oh, you like something weird and causes conflicts and causes a bunch of distractions. That if you were to just pick that up and remove it, which homeschooling would do, you could still get a group of. And, and actually, I'm about to mention something. A, a, a vision for this came up. You remove that from the physical form where they have time to waste in a public school, especially a public school that might be underfunded. You get all these potential toxic uh, situations for your kids where they may get depressed because they feel left out or violence potentially. And of course, the, the the boomers and the millennials, fellow millennials, and the Gen Zers, especially uh, Gen Xers, are going to be like, "Well, that's part of growing up." You know, we got into fist fights when we grew up, and that's normal. But you know what? The reality, maybe that's not so normal. And maybe taking that out of like, and maybe that's where we got where we got to today. Um, if we take away that and we focus on just the, the actual academia of learning by giving them the homeschooling away from the kids to distract them. Th- you know, they, they can focus more on the schooling, less on the bullying, less on the fighting, and then they can go to their extracurricular activities to make friends because everybody's there for a purpose, for swimming, for, for, for board gaming, for nerding out, for music, whatever it is, you're all there with a common cause, not there to be like sitting around like, oh, school blows, like how most kids are when they go to, the, to public school anyway. So then it's not like they're excited to be there. Uh, and then the last thing I'd leave out, I want to, I want to leave with you is that you know, there's still a social aspect to homeschooling, potentially in the form that you mentioned it. And I think this was my aha moment that made me think about it because there's still the online communication aspect, like maybe students, I guess that doesn't fully take away the bullying aspect or any or, or negative potential toxic aspects, but it does limit it. They can communicate online about their, you know, their homework, their tasks, um, but they're not necessarily, there's not this idle time in the public school where they just have time to to ne- you know come up with negative situations by themselves. There's a lot to unpack there. <laughs> Sorry, there was a lot. Yeah, yeah, I kind of blew the wall of text at you. Sorry, made it dumb. Um, but 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 it's good. It, it, it's interesting to see uh, a, a bunch of things. But but what really stands out to me is your visceral reaction when we talked about it before the show. And I think that's what a lot of parents um, initially react to. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. as you kind as you kind of like uh, learn and hear about it from a different perspective. 
then you realize that, okay, there's actually negatives to the in-person one. There's some negatives to the homeschooled version, but there's maybe a middle ground, right? And it's like, how do you take the best of this and bring it here and kind of like mix them up? Um, what, what also stands out to me is the examples that you gave of extracurricular activities are all structured activities. Mm-hmm. I'm not a parent, but I think that it's very important for children um, to have unstructured playtime. Yes, as well. Where, yeah. they, where they kind of like discover themselves, discover each other, um, learn how to communicate, learn how to like solve disagreements. Like I want the ball. No, I want the ball. Right. Like th- th- those are those are very important. And lastly, I would say that in our kind of like traditional schooling system, like currently does that time actually exist i would actually argue that recess is like 30 minutes mm-hmm. and that's it the rest of the time you're kind of in class you're sitting there in just like this one seat environment and you're just being t- talked at mm-hmm. um and you're being taught how to regurgitate a textbook right yeah. you're being taught what to think not how to think i think that is a key miss in our, tra- yeah. in our traditional um schooling system that could be corrected with a different curriculum it doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be homeschooling yeah. but i don't think that the public school system is checking all of the boxes i, I think they're just on work. autopilot i think they're to your point i think I, I don't think there's any drastic innovation that's happening there just because of the funding it. being yeah. so tight it's like how do i go it's it's almost and i love all our teachers and, and what they do like we really respect that but it the real the realistic aspect is that with the, the number the, the number of funding or the level of funding that they get they're there to just keep the lights on make sure the kids pass there's no real like oh how do we really change i mean some on, on an individual level a little bit but not on a on a on a grander level where they can make an impact the only the other thing that came to mind when you mentioned this was when you said um what did you say like oh can we change the curriculum like this can transform it really can transform it the other aspect is you're no longer bound to where you live in terms of mm-hmm. the quality of, of schooling that you get in the sense that I think it's a good idea to still keep it regional. Like, oh, people that live within X miles go to school together. Like, uh, I'm not saying like one mile, I'm saying maybe within like 50 miles, right? Like a larger, a larger area. They can, you can go to school with random people within a hundred miles. Um, and the reason being is that you no longer isolate or segregate people who may live in a neighborhood that's bad with a bad school, underfunded. Now you just kind of even, it's actually, there's, a, there's actually true equality. You don't have a building you need to really um, uh, fund and keep up because the building might look more decrepit because it's in a bad, you know, a bad neighborhood um, or the, uh, you know, they don't have any other programs because it's too costly. In this case, it, the, 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 the actual cost of schooling should drop because, you know, you it's all digital, digital resources. It should be much more free, right? And then... It should then allow for, or maybe make schools smaller so that people meet up once a month or something like that and make them nicer and smaller because you're not paying a bunch of people. Perhaps, and again, I'm not saying have less teachers is a good idea. I don't want less teachers, but there is a shortage of, there is a known shortage of teachers now. So teachers need to do more with less. So taking it digital makes all the sense in the world and even leveraging VR. I know VR is far away from, from becoming a, a household point, item, yeah. but the VR can also help. And maybe that is the transformation that we need. I went from being like, no way homeschool to now thinking <laughs> to like, <sign> dude, <laughs> to the, to, yeah, well, to the like, maybe it's what, the, it's the transformation that's needed. Like it's, it might not even be like, I, I you've just thinking through, I think I've almost like with your help of, of course, convinced myself of like, it went from like a nice to have option to maybe it's like a, it's a much needed, it, it's like, it's the only way forward for the future of public education is to go digital. Is to go digital yeah yeah I, all, all all excellent points like so many things change because of the pandemic right like we keep yeah. coming back to it but it's like kids were introduced to this virtual learning parents realized that i don't have to live you know in uh in manhattan right to, yeah. to go to, to to go to my office there i can live in wisconsin and mm-hmm. afford a much better quality of life and my kid as a result doesn't have to go to a school in wisconsin they could still get the same education as they would in, in like a, a manhattan school right exactly. i also think that to, to your point about teachers Teachers get paid nothing in the United States. It's it's it's, it's horrible. I would argue that the uh, the um, a, a a curriculum that um, sorry a homeschooled curriculum that's actually provided by like Khan Academy or like y- 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 um, Udemy, I, I think was another one, but that's more for coding. Yeah. Um, all of those cost money. It's it's not it's not free just because it's digital. But I would argue that those teachers, like if you were a teacher, you were getting paid you know twenty five dollars an, an hour and mm-hmm. I offered you to teach a virtual class, like a homeschooling version for $40 an hour. Of course, you're going to jump. 
And so I actually think that as a result, you're going to get smaller craft classroom sizes virtually, yes. potentially, uh, with a teacher that gets paid more so they can actually, you know, put in a little but bit th more. This would be your, but this wouldn't be public school. No, no, this is, this is all homeschool. This is, this I, I think ho homeschool. Okay. Yeah. I, I, and I guess my vision that I was saying was like, so I know more homeschool. Hybrid, it sounds like. My, well, my, mine is like, I think the public school system mm -hmm. should really highly consider I guess that's my the route I started going is like, you're right, like from a private school pers perspective, I think we have the funds to do all these things for sure. But from like an even playing field, like the public school system should highly consider going um, the the uh, the virtual route. But here, I also just thought about it. Like I know some people are like, they got to go to work and that's where their kids could be, you know, basically babysat for free to some regards. That's just, I think that's essentially what, what it is. It's like, like the reason schools in, in a way exist is, uh, well, on the very low income scale, they also like feed them, right? They give them, feed them as well, lunch, yeah, which, which exactly. is a huge part and a huge uh, lift for, for, for parents who can't afford that. But to your point, it's, yeah, I have to go to work for eight hours. Uh, meet me, my, meet like parents, me and my wife usually have to have to go to work. Yeah. Um, what is going to happen to that child? We can't yeah. afford to have a nanny for eight hours. Like a lot of parents can't afford to have a nanny for eight hours a day. Um, so what happens there? But I, I, I kind of, I kind of like that this episode's not really structured. Like we're, we're jumping around a lot of it, a lot of yeah. places, but I think it's important to, to remember why public schools came or like why schooling came into existence. I, I can't remember where, where I read this, but um, factory and worker anyone, hiring. And, 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 exactly. And anyone listening to this, feel free to correct me. But historically education was for male elites, mm -hmm. right? And, and then it sort of got opened up to, okay, we are building a lot of factories. How do we get employees who are going to consistently show up to work, who are going to like say, you know, yes. Um, and then move, on to the next task and like, you know, actually be responsible. Mm -hmm. I, um, I, I have, I have this written down somewhere, so I'm just gonna read it. Uh, I don't know if it makes sense. It's like, why did public schools come about? Factory owners required a docile, agreeable workers who would show up on time and do what their managers told them. Sitting in a classroom all day with a teacher was good training for that. Logically, that flows. That, that yeah. totally makes sense to me. And then I think that we just, because of standardized tests, everyone was taught in a standardized way. But a mm -hmm. lot of parents, realize that their child might not be standard, right? Like, you know, like these days is diagnosed with, with different things. Like, oh, my kid's hyperactive or this and that. Um, yeah. We're all different, you know? Yeah. And so like, it, it's, it's, it's challenging to be that student that is not like everyone else. And that child starts feeling bad, you know? It, and, and, and there's consequences of that. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. And, and is, is, by the way, was that law or not law? Um, when they went that origin of public school, was that when they implemented the compulsory um, education law? I don't know what that is. What is that? Uh, where they for basically all kids must, the law requiring kids to go to school in the early 1900s. Speak, speak, speaking of angry kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I can hear it. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. I, I, haven't, I, haven't, I actually don't, I think that's the first time. Well, because you, you know, it's like, it's legally kids are required to go to school. Sure, today. that makes sense, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I think in the early 1900s that was implemented. I, I wondered if it was around the same time. Um, the, the timeline makes sense because I think that like when did factories come about? Right around that time, right? Like the yeah. revolution and all of that. Yeah. Um, they, so that, that 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 flows to me. Um, what, what's weird about that? Okay. Uh, I was sorry. I was going to say it really quickly. The, the last thing about that. It's interesting that even got passed. I figure. I feel like something like that being passed today would be would get a lot of backlash from a specific side of the political spe spectrum. Yeah, but like I'm sure it was sold in a very positive way. Which, it, like again, public schools have a lot of positive merit to them. Yeah. Um. Not not like not to mention the food. Like yeah. When you, when you go to apply for a job or for college, which has been the traditional route, you know that this, everyone got went through the same standardized flow, and they can take the standardized test, and then that test gets you into um, you know one of the schools. Yep. Um. We've talked about this in another episode. Colleges might not necessarily be around in the future, right? Certifications yeah. have become much more popular. So I would actually argue two things here. Number one. Um, what is, I am a proponent of homeschooling for, for one very big reason. You can teach topics and subjects that are not covered in public schools. Number one, how to deal with anxiety via like meditation. That is not at all covered. And we have an entire society of people who are struggling with anxiety. Yep. Um, can, can we early on introduce some of those instruments? The counter argument could be that I could see public schools introducing meditation time and things like that as part of the curriculum. I think they should. But also like other topics like how to use artificial intelligence, right? Like earlier on, I don't know how long it's going to take for the public school system to introduce that, but they might. But more importantly, going back to like how uh, like the genesis of, uh, of, of um, public schools and like factories and all that, public schools and like schools in general and colleges in a way 
teach you how to become a great employee. They don't necessarily right. teach you how to be a great entrepreneur. Right? They teach you what to think, not how to think. And I think that one of the key um, benefits of having a homeschooled uh, approach is you can structure a curriculum. Like imagine I, I showed you, uh, you went to my website and it said, what's the career path you want for your child? I want him to be a doctor. Okay, you go, you go here, you take these curriculums. I want, or do you want your child to be a business owner to start their own business? Then you should follow this entrepreneur path for them. That's more experiential. It's more ideation based, like things like that. You yeah. can really kind of like decide the paths that are going to be open and the doors that might be open for your child versus I know they're going to get a high paying job as an employee, which is historically what the value proposition of public schools has been for, you know, for generations. Yeah, I, I think that to me that makes sense. I think it's something hard that's going to be hard for our generation to grasp, though, without a doubt. Tell me more. What do you mean? Well, the the struggle of like, um, I, I think anybody who's Gen X millennial parents are not going to really. I, I think we see the rise of homeschooling, but I think culturally, like most people that I'm going to know in, in real life, I don't. I don't think they're going to. I don't think they're going to totally be on board for sure. They're going to be like, no, it doesn't make sense. That's weird. We're isolating our parents, you know, we're isolating our kids from one another. I don't want to do that. Are you sure? Plus, I don't know of any reputable household homeschooling names right now. And I think that, like, I'm sure there's some homeschool companies out there. Like, there's quite a few, yeah. Oh, do you know some? I, I don't know. They're not household names to me, so I, I don't know them. But I'm sure there's a bunch yeah, of Yeah, like, like, like um, first of all, what, um, I, what, what people associate homeschooling with is like Christianity. Right, like um, religious-based <laughs> schools have been around for quite a long time, and in a way, they do well. They achieve their goals. They they create the person that, that they're kind of uh, pushing for. Mm -hmm. But there's there's other like uh, Khan Academy, like K H A N. I think is, is do a, they do K through like, twelve though? And they're accredited K through twelve. Uh, I think so. The, the accreditation piece is is a little um, is a question mark for me. But yeah, yeah. If I, I'm, if I, I'm if I, like... go to go to like KhanAcademy.org. Yeah. Yeah, they do. They do some math, pre K, like right on the homepage, uh, pre K through eighth grade, test prep, math, uh, economics. Like you, you could, you could, you could take partner courses like Asian art, uh, philosophy, things, NASA, right? Like this is cool stuff. This is something, and it says like trusted content, tools to empower teachers. Teacher, teachers can identify gaps in their students' understanding, tailor instructions that meet the needs of every student. Like this is more. I don't know that they're really the answer necessarily, but that's the path. That's what attracts yeah. par parents because, okay, you're capturing the things that work in a public school, but yeah. you're letting me do it in my way. And I'm taking away like the distractions and like the bullying that you mentioned yeah. from that environment. And then if you are able to close the gap, which, which you raise, which I think is a key point for people, it's, well, is my child going to be antisocial yeah. or are, is there going to be a built-in opportunity for them to socialize? Totally. We talked about this before the show. I think that the thing that you do have in common as a homeschool child is you potentially have access to all of these other homeschool children. And so when it's time for playtime and parents um, structure that, then they already have something baked in, something in common. So I would argue they're even more likely to, to find commonalities, to be able to like, they're on the journey together. That's yeah. important. I, you know? I, I agree. I agree. I, and I'm seeing it a lot more now. Uh, and, and I see much more light. You know, the, la the last thing before we close out, I, I wanted to get... Uh, just creative for like two minutes and think about like what, like, I, I don't know, I, I kind of got caught into this this thought of like what the future of schooling could look like with not necessarily homes, I guess I'd call it homeschooling or like digital schooling. But like, I'm, I'm imagining a world where we take all our school buildings that we have now and we shrink them to some extent, like we shrink them half the size or we maybe we rebuild them, we repurpose them. Maybe we don't need to destroy them, but we can put in a lot of work into them to make them really beautiful, full of plants and stuff like that. And what I'm getting to is that like, I'm thinking about how we are with like work today. Like, well, there's a lot of hybrid work uh, scenario. So what if we had one class meet up in person once a day or once, you know, once a month and the wear and tear of these buildings would be easier to maintain, but they could also be repurposed very beautifully so that you don't need to have like this cookie cutter class, like 30 cookie cutter classrooms. You can have rooms dedicated to playgrounds and playing, rooms dedicated to plants, room dedicated to a computer lab, like repurpose most of that space to have this, these awesome resources that one class can go in and enjoy, you know, once or twice a month uh, when they all meet in person, but the core of their cl class uh, classwork is done online remotely at home. And then they would look forward to going in rather than being like, Oh uh, yeah, I gotta go to school today. Oh, school's so boring. I hate it. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> you know, instead they'll be like, 
oh, today's one of the days I get to go in. Yes, we get to, I get to see Bobby and hang out with Bobby. And I, I, I'm going to bring my Pokemon cards to show him. I don't, that ages me, I guess, but because I don't think it's <laughs> anymore, but you know, something like that. I get excited about that vision. Yeah. yeah. I, I was it was there more to that? Did you want to add? No, that? that's it. That's really it. Yeah. I, I I agree with you. I I, I think that it, it sort of it creates this weird um this weird like um in, inter interlinking between like a true homeschooling environment mm-hmm. um and retaining these public school assets and buildings. I actually I, I feel like they cannot work together. I think that if you have a public school building, yeah, you need some funds to create those like experimental classes, essentially. Um, but then how do they work with homeschooling? What I could see, though, is if I take your concept, get public dollars away from it. Um, mm, private and you use, yeah, Essentially, yeah. You take the, the funding that comes from homeschooling um, and you create these buildings or convert, you know, like churches that are going out of business that uh-huh. people don't really attend anymore. Yeah. Um, and you convert those into like these experiential, you know, multi-boxes kind of things. Um, because I agree, I, and, and I think we keep circling around the fact that that social aspect is what you need the most of, especially in those K through twelve ages. Yeah, um, that's the. It, I, I think it's easy to say like, oh, that that you'll still get that. You know, you can go to the park when you have homeschooling. But I think when when it comes down to it, you do have to think through those things in a very intelligent way. Um, yeah. And I agree with you. I think that kids should want to go to school because of friends, because of these extracurricular activities. But I think that a lot of parents, especially these days, are just like they, they cite these concerns over the, the education in traditional schools, right? The 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 dissatisfaction of, of, of kind of like this doesn't really match my my values or it doesn't match the um it, or it's falling behind in the topics like AI and anxiety and like how to become entrepreneurs. Yep. How do we and, and then I think everyone realizes that the public school system, because it's so um, systemic it is very challenging to course correct a cruise ship. It is much easier to kind of build something from scratch um, and to get people who are drawn to those things, right? Because, you know, like if, if we go back to it, factory um, factories needing factory workers was the genesis of the public school system. All these years later in 2025, is that still the model that we need to use? I don't think it is. I think that we do need to evolve and either public schools need to evolve, um, Mm -hmm. which I think is a much more challenging ask or this new opportunity is going to continue to grow and grow. And I don't know. It it sounds to me like you're, you're, you're still sort of on the fence, which, which, which I, I I can see the reasons for it. I I think today. Yeah. But, but I'm excited to see what it could actually be. Yeah. Me too. You want to wrap it here? This is good. Wrap it up. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. Well, uh, thanks for joining us and we'll catch you next time. Bye.